Does that look okay? Yeah, just am, am I looking at you when we do this? Yeah, yeah okay, fair enough. <laughs> Where's it cut off from? So, just below you. Okay. I'm one of three girls. I played sports and video games with my mates and all that kind of stuff. I think when I was at school, I probably had an inkling that I wasn't really interested in boys. I sort of was in a place where I didn't fit in uh, a huge amount, like with any particular sort of group. I suppose I started suspecting in my mid-teens that I was a little bit different. Yeah, I, I started playing rugby. I was, I was 110 kilo of muscle. I was dressed in a little pink dress and she popped me up on the counter and the material lady said, oh, what a beautiful little girl, what's your name, dear? And I said, Gavin. I sort of had in the back of my mind that all guys sort of had an interest, but it was just a thing that you went through in your teens. I was born into a very religious family. I used to go to church every Sunday, youth every Friday, Bible study every Wednesday. And for me, um, being gay was definitely not an option. When I hit the wonderful age of about 40, that um, I decided that, um, well, I'd tried straight life, so perhaps uh, gay life might be the way to go. I must have been about 38 or something like that when I went back to UK and uh, met my current wife. She worked out, she said, oh, you know, you like shopping too much, you like, you, you understand fashion too well, it's something not, not quite right here. You must be transgender or if you want to, do you want to see something about it and you've got my blessing to go ahead and change and do whatever you need to do. Watching, I suppose, like the girls that I grew up with embracing their femininity through high school and, and their childhood and really sort of running with it and enjoying it and loving that process of growing into a woman and I could never it just didn't gel with me. That was pretty scary to sort of feel disconnected to something that should be so fundamental. I thought that um, I would actually be considered like less of a person. I had my own um, ideas in my head of what it meant to be gay um, and I'd kind of look at that and say well I don't fit that. And I can remember being around other police officers and senior police officers and thinking I'm not going to tell anyone that I'm gay. If I had said something while I was at school or with my local doctor there, I would have been put in a straitjacket and locked up somewhere. It sometimes did feel like that there was a great big dark hole waiting to actually open up and swallow you and, uh, and take you away. It's just turmoil. Complete turmoil goes on. Um, predominantly, the perceptions I had was that uh, I wouldn't be accepted, that I would be shunned. That was probably the, the worst of it. Um understanding who you are but but not being able to share it it was it was pretty bad and uh, for a few years there I, I considered that the best option was to actually take my own life to just that would be the easiest thing to do um, so. I guess I had to pick a time and a date to sort of I guess, um, be honest with my mum. My older sister walked in and she said, Ben's got something to tell you, but he's too scared to tell you, so I'm going to tell you, but he's gay. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, whatever, and just kept dining. My oldest daughter actually rang me up one day and said, um, Dad, I've got a question to ask you. And I went, oh, yeah, OK. And she said, are you gay? To which I then burst into tears. I think she could see that there was something that I wanted to say. And uh, she ended up just saying to me, like, what is it? Spit it out. It's fine. Don't worry. And so I ended up telling her that, uh, that I'd met someone. And uh, she was like, okay. And I said, yeah, mum, it's, it's a guy. I, uh, I actually wrote them all a letter. So I wrote them all a letter and I got, immediately got phone calls as soon as the letters arrived of support. She said to me, look, you're my son and I'll always love you, no matter what. My mum asked me, Lorena, do you have a relationship with this girl? Or you, do you have an intimate relationship with her? And I said, yes, and she said, your dad is going to be so disappointed. I think it was quite devastating for her. Um, and it took a few years for her to come right, but she's absolutely amazing now. Yeah, so everything's perfect. When I was more truthful to myself and, um, yeah, took it a little bit more seriously, that's when I told my older sister and went, I think, you know, this is the case. And she, she was basically like, so? I guess for me, one of the things that I've always regretted is I never told Mum that I was gay. Um, even though Adrian was living in the same house, 
separate bedroom, so um, we uh, respected mum. Um, and uh, I guess uh, it was one of those things that I look back now and I wish I had have had that conversation with her. I started to be more comfortable about, you know, within myself um, and also with the concept that, um, that your sexual orientation and or your, your gender identity doesn't define you. I expected a far colder reception than what I received, I think. I suppose it just goes to show there was nothing to ever be scared of. Everyone said it doesn't make any difference. Um, we're still your sisters, brothers, mother, father. Um, we'll support you, you know, 110% no matter what. Having that weight lifted off my shoulders made my life immeasurably easier and just to be able to live my life um, honestly for the first time. Eventually came from a very uh, dark place of depression and thoughts of suicide to a really bright future. I've gone on to not only spend 17 years in this wonderful job to, to have a daughter and I have my friends and family. I love my job and I'm out and proud at work and there is there is no part of my life that needs to be hidden. There is no part of my life that I need to be fearful of. I'm a proud lesbian woman, but that alone doesn't define who I am. I'm the same sarcastic pommy underneath, but I've got to, I just changed the wallpaper. <laughs> and I've come to a point where I understand that people will just accept you uh, for the person uh, that you are. And, um, and in a professional setting, I guess for the, um, for the police officer or the, or the bomb technician that you are. I, I feel like I always wanted to be a police officer. When, uh, when my br like brother and I were little, um, we'd always play cops and robbers. Um, he was never allowed to be the cop. I guess I grew up thinking, oh, one day I'd maybe like to join the police. I thought, no, it's, you can't, uh, can't be in there if you're gay. There's no gays in the police. You've got to be tough and macho. And I suddenly realised, actually, this is part of the family I've been missing from and I put my application in and I've never looked back. It's been one of the best journeys I've ever been on. The first day in the car with my field training officer and he says to me, so Lorianna, what are you? Are you um, gay, straight, bisexual? And I was like, whoa, I've already made this decision to, you know, tell the lie, but this is, he's just made it so much easier for me. Just because we're gay doesn't make any difference to the job we do. We're police and we do a job um, and we try and do it to the best of our ability. We're all e equal and we're all just like each other and the only difference is, is our sexuality. You know, since I joined in the late 80s, uh, it's really taken leaps and bounds. There's been a, a few times where you come across someone in your work who you can see is going through the same things that you, you went through. It's an important part of my career focus now is to provide advice and support for younger people because it was absent when we were all younger. Definitely talk to someone, uh, speak to a LGBTI liaison officer. And if you give them a chance, they're there and they're waiting to help you. You know, you have to let them reach for you or you have to reach out for them and let them know that you need it. To know that I could make a difference or help somebody um, through those struggles would, would mean the world to me. To actually demonstrate that you can actually make a difference and it does get better. But if I can give answers and help to those kiddies and think, yeah, okay, look, you know, if you're feeling this, this could be a reason, don't be ashamed, don't, you know, don't hide it. In time, things do get better. It's this massive weight off your shoulders. I kind of look forward to a future where there isn't a time where people need to come out just be who you are because there's nothing wrong with it. You should be proud of who you are. You mightn't seem like it at the time and you might seem like you're the only person going through uh, your experience, but I uh, can assure you that you're not the only person going through what you're going through. When I believed in myself, it got better. When I was honest with myself, it got better. It, you know, it's a hard road initially, but it, to use the words, it does get better. It does get better. Never give up. I'm better. It's okay. Absolutely, it does get better. It does get better. It really does.